Well, welcome back, guys. And as ever, I hope you and your family are keeping well. And I'm sorry you can't be here yet again uh, due to this confounded virus, um, so you're at home learning. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we're going to start our topic on uh, magnets and electromagnetism. And we're going to look at magnetic materials, permanent magnets, induced magnetism and the magnetic field. So Barry's got a Brio train set and he absolutely loves it. And I'm sure you had one when you were younger. And you knew that if you brought a carriage up to the train, they stuck together. And if you got it the wrong way around, they repelled. Um, and he's learned to turn the carriage around to get it so that the magnets stick together. And you know, we've got permanent magnets on these devices. And that's what our lesson's gonna be about today. But when I finish the magnetism um, topic completely, I want you to understand what happens when we have magnets in a situation that are electromagnets. So magnets that use electricity to work can also be used to create electric motors. And that's sort of gonna be the end of our topic. So before this runs off the desk, uh, and in case of home runs underneath the sofa, let's start looking at permanent magnets and how they work. So let's look first at permanent magnets, like the ones that caused the attraction and repulsion uh, in the little Brio train. So I've got two lab magnets here, and it's a little bit annoying because we normally label uh, the north end of the magnet red and the other end we leave it sort of black, uh, but these are red all over. So I've labeled the two north ends. Now, the first thing you need to know about permanent magnets is they're made of iron. Iron is a magnetic material. Uh, cobalt and nickel um, also can be magnetic. So uh, for the GCSE, remember that if you take something that is iron, um, like these paper clips, they attract to a magnet. Um, interestingly enough, if I turn the magnet around, they still attract. OK, um, so there's something interesting going on there. These don't attract together yet. They only seem to work by a magnet. But both of these are made of iron. They're made of a magnetic material. Um, so think about sorting cans at a scrapyard. You can't sort metal cans with a magnet because the magnet won't pick up tin cans, aluminium cans, bits of copper. It will only pick up material that's got iron in it. And so that's a bit of a trick question. Um, the next thing um, I'd like you to know about magnets, and I'm sure you know this, is they have two places where they particularly uh, repel very well like that, or they attract very well. And those are the poles of the magnet. And every single permanent magnet has two poles. Uh, we've never yet in physics found a monopole. Even if you break it in half, you actually get two little magnets, both with two poles. And we label those poles, as you know, the north and the south. And we really only get two effects with permanent magnets. Identical poles, so similar poles repel, and opposite poles attract. And that's going to be interesting later on when we look at what's going on between opposite poles. So north and north here repel, south and south repel, and let's get north that way and let's get south that way. Opposites attract. So in summary, we know which materials are magnetic. We know that some materials um, produce permanent magnets like this and others are only magnetic when they're by a magnet and we call those induced magnets. And we'll have a look at those uh, in a minute. And we know that every magnet has got two poles, a north and a south. And you can find those poles by seeing if you get attraction or repulsion. Interestingly enough, if you know you've got a permanent magnet, if things stick to both ends of the magnet equally well, then you know that this material is not a permanent magnet. These are induced magnets. And we'll talk about how induced magnetism works in a minute. Now, 
Finding the poles of a magnet is an interesting process. If you take a bar magnet like this one and bend it around into a horseshoe shape, you get a shape like this, and this is a very strong magnet. Um, now, you can't assume you know where the poles are. The poles could be on either side of this, or it could be in other places. But what you do is you go hunting for the place where magnetism is strongest. And in the case of this horseshoe magnet, magnetism is strongest across this gap. So we know the places of strongest magnetism are the poles. So one of these is north and one of them is south. And I hope you know how you'd find out. You'd find out by taking a known pole like a north and I'm trying to put it here and it's swiveling round. So this one must be the south and we'll just check that that's the north. So we'll take the south of this magnet. Yep, and that attracts to there. So you're able to find the poles, the places of strongest magnetism, strongest magnetic field, and you're also able to label them if you've got a known magnet. But what we're gonna do next is we're gonna look at what happens if we make this magnet smaller and suspend it on a very fine point or bearing. So what happens if you take a bar magnet and you hang it up on a very thin piece of string or um, you put it on a fine bearing, okay? But what you make there is a compass. And when this was done historically, they noticed something really rather unusual. That when you hung up a bar magnet on a piece of string, it always swung round, listen to this carefully because it's not what you think, such that the north of the magnet, the north pole of the magnet, pointed towards the north of the Earth. So it could be used for navigation. Okay, you've used them for D of E and things like that. Now I'm going to say that again because whenever I say this, um, very few people notice why this is really strange. Okay, the north of the magnet turns round and points to the north pole. It's over there in my lab. And if that's the case, it must mean at the top of the Earth, there is a south magnetic pole attracting this magnet. And we're gonna look at that in a little bit more detail later. So that's a slightly weird thing, isn't it? That the top of the Earth, what you call the North Pole, is actually a south magnetic pole. And the bottom of the Earth, that we call the South Pole, is a north magnetic pole. Okay, um, why did it ever end up with those names? Well, it's really quite obvious if you think about it. If there's a south magnet pole at the top of the Earth, okay, it's the place that Norths get attracted to. So Norths like to go to the North Pole. Um, when I was at school, they used to call it the North Seeking Pole. I don't know how that helped us understand it, okay? But it w people walked to the place that their North pointed to, and when they got there, they said, hey, my North point's here, I'm gonna call that the North Pole. So you all know about compasses and I've taken the middle out of a compass here so we can call this a plotting compass. What it does is it lines up along the magnetic field of the Earth. And the Earth's magnetic field, because the Earth's poles are very far apart, is very weak. But the fact it has a magnetic um, effect on compasses means the Earth must be magnetic and therefore we know that under the ground there must be materials made of iron. OK, and that's something they mentioned in the uh, specification for this course. How do we know something about the inner workings of the Earth? What method could we use if we haven't dug down that far? Well, one of the things is we notice magnetism. So there must be something happening in the Earth with magnetic materials like iron. So you'll notice that this compass kind of uh, lines up along a magnetic field line. It points to the North Pole. But if I bring in uh, this magnet here, um, the compass stops doing what it was doing and pointing along the Earth's magnetic field, and it starts pointing towards this magnet's poles. And the reason for that is fairly obvious, that it will point 
at the strongest magnetic pole. So this is much stronger than the Earth's magnetism. So we've got to be really careful when we use magnets to keep them away from any other magnetic materials. And that includes um, things that would induce magnetism. So if we had a, a piece of iron here, I don't know if it'll work with paper clips, it's worth trying. Um, not very well. Uh, but if we had a piece of iron here, the magnet in the compass would try and follow that. So to use a compass, we must be away from all magnetic materials. That includes magnets, induced magnetic materials um, and electromagnets because we're trying to pick up only the magnetism of the Earth to navigate. So let's talk a little bit more about this idea of the magnetic field. Well, the force between magnets is a non-contact force. It acts over a distance they don't have to touch. And even when they attract, they attract before they're touching, if you see what I mean. OK, gravity is a non-contact force as well. And so what's going on? I'll do attraction here. What's going on in this gap? Well, in this gap, there is a place in space where magnetic materials feel a force. And we call places in space fields and places in space where magnetic materials feel forces, we call the magnetic field. So what we need to do is make this invisible force field visible. And we've got two ways of doing that. OK, one of them, and I'll cut to a bit of video that I made a while ago uh, to show this, is to put a bit of paper on top of the magnets and to sprinkle on top iron filings. And iron filings are made of iron, obviously, okay? And they're uh, not um, permanently magnetic, but they induce magnetism in them. And so when you spray them on or sprinkle them on, they'll line up with the magnetic field. And I'll show you that in a minute. And you need to know the shapes of the magnetic fields, okay? Another way to do it is to take a magnet and do you remember that the magnetic field around here is stronger than the Earth's? And to bring a compass in and to move that compass around and to see which way it points. And look at all the different directions that it points in. And what we're doing there is using a plotting compass to plot to show the shape of the magnetic field. And I'll move the camera in a minute and show you that experiment um, because in exams they often put little compasses down by magnets and they ask you to draw on which way the needles would be pointing. OK, so let's investigate the magnetic field pattern due to a single bar magnet. So here we go. We've got the bar magnet under the piece of the paper and I'm going to begin sprinkling on the iron filings. Now, I remember when I first started teaching this, um, I sort of thought, well, it's pretty obvious what's happening here. But um, it took a while, really, for me to realise that students couldn't actually look at the picture very well and see what was going on. But what you notice is lines coming out of the poles, that's the North Pole, and coming into the South Pole, and lines coming around like this, out of the North and into the South, out of the North and into the South. And what you're seeing there is the shape of the magnetic field around the bar magnet. And you'll notice where most of the iron filings stick, that's where the poles are. That's where the magnetic field is strongest. But what about if we've got two magnets? Now, these two have a north and a south facing each other. We don't need to know which is which, but because they attract, the poles are opposite. And there must be a magnetic field in this gap causing those forces. So why don't we put those two magnets that were attracting each other, getting the right way around, attracting each other under the piece of paper, sprinkle some iron filings on top and see what field pattern we get. So we'll hold them apart a little bit and hope the friction will keep them there. Put the piece of paper on top and sprinkle on the iron filings. And if you look carefully, the iron filings stick to the poles. That's where the magnetic field uh, is very strong and it's quite weak out here. But you can see field lines now going straight across, a parallel field lines. And if this is the north and that's the south, they're going straight across the gap. And if the lines are evenly spaced, 
the field has the same strength everywhere in the gap, and that's what we call a uniform magnetic field. OK, so now let's have a quick look at how plotting compasses work. So this magnet has got a magnetic field around it, a place in space where magnetic objects feel a force. But um, we can't see that magnetic field, so let's see if we can use a compass to show where it is. So I'll just take away the magnet and I'll remind you that a compass needle, the red end is a north magnetic pole and it points to the top of the Earth, it points to the north of the Earth. So that one is north, so it's always going to point towards south's poles, any south poles on the Earth or on magnets. Right, so there's our magnet and I've labelled the north pole on it. So if I put the plotting compass here, OK, you'll notice that the north of the magnet attracts the south. So there's the north of the compass and it's pointing that way. OK, so we would draw an arrow pointing that way. Now let's move it around a little bit. OK, do you notice it's now pointing this way? And then when I move to here, it's pointing straight towards me. I'm always looking at the way a north pole would point. I'm going to move to here. It's now pointing that way. It's now pointing that way. I'll keep going round, go a little bit further. It's now pointing that way and I'll come down here. It's now pointing that way and finally at the end, it's pointing in. OK, so what we appear to have is an arrow pointing like that, then like this, then like that, then that, then that. They're coming round in a kind of loop. I think you know what I'm doing here. So the magnetic field in this region are lines that go out of the north and into the south. And if we did the same on this side, it's exactly uh, what you'd expect, that we come round here and you'll see the compass pointing round and round and finally pointing into the south pole. So I've used a plotting compass there to show the direction of the magnetic field. And I'll just remind you that the magnetic field direction, so it's a line going round like that, the direction is the direction a north pole would point. So we can use little compasses to plot the shape of the magnetic field. And whilst we're here, we might just very quickly do this one. OK, so there's a North Pole and there's a South Pole. We can check because they attract. And let's put the plotting compass in between and look at that. OK, the plotting compass points straight across. So the magnetic field here is a line coming out of the North and going straight into the South of that magnet. We're following the North Pole of the compass. Now, it's pretty obvious that if I turn these around this way, it's still exactly the same, OK? There's a magnetic field from north to south, and it's a straight line drawn across the gap with an arrow on it, always pointing the way a north pole, pole would point. Now, this one is a really important field, OK? These lines going between the two, and in this case going from north to south, produce a magnetic field in here that is very strong, because we're by the poles. It's very strong because they're close together and it consists of lines that go across and they're equally spaced, which means that the magnetism in this gap is the same strength everywhere. That If I put my hand in the way, closer or further away, there are the same number of field lines going through my hand. So the field in this gap is like the clothes that you wear to go to school that are all the same. It is the same strength. It's a uniform magnetic field. And uniform magnetic fields are going to be brilliant for making motors. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up onto the board and sketch a couple of diagrams to show you the shape and direction of magnetic fields, to show you how we use plotting compasses and to show you the magnetic field pattern of the Earth. OK, so let's put all our ideas together in sort of a kind of a note form. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, draw maybe this way a bar magnet. So a bar magnet 
has poles on the ends. Okay, and we uh, knew that um, it has a north pole, and I'll draw it in a different colour, a south pole. And around it, it has a region where magnetic forces are felt, so it has a magnetic field. Okay. I'm not going to draw another North Pole coming up here and repelling and a South coming up here and attracting because you know that. But what I wanted to do was just remind you about induced magnetism. That if we took some paper clips which aren't normally magnetic, okay, uh, but they are made of a magnetic material, they're made of iron, um, then they stick quite well. Okay, so there's a little paper clip shape. Maybe I'll curl it around a bit more. Uh, sticking onto the magnet there. Okay, and what's happened is that the atoms that weren't magnetic in the paperclip have been induced, they've been encouraged to become a magnet. And so I hope you can see that the top will be turning into a little south pole and the bottom will be turning into a little north pole. Only for the time that you have it by the magnet. When you take it away, those atoms jiggle about, they're too hot, and it loses the lined up nature of the magnetism. Now what's interesting is we've got a permanent magnet, an induced magnet, and if we bring another paper clip up here, okay, you'd expect the same thing to happen. That the atoms line up, the domains they're called, you don't need to know that, line up in the second induced magnet. So we get a south here and a north here. So I hope you could see from that diagram what you would have to add to the picture if you had to explain induced magnetism with a bar magnet and uh, some paper clips sticking to it. You could draw the poles on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw our bar magnet on its side. Here it is, okay, and I'll mark the poles on, north and south, okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a number of plotting compasses around that magnet. So this is what we did earlier on in our demonstration. So there's a compass there, there's a compass here, there's a compass here, uh, let's put another one uh, there, and maybe another one here. I'm just kind of throwing them onto the diagram. I could have a whole load here as well, but I'm not going to. Now, if you remember, the plotting compass arrow is a north pole. And if I put the compass here, the north of the compass will repel and point away. So there's the arrow. You remember that going round, this one sort of pointed that way a bit, this one that way, this one that way, and this one, the north arrow, attracts to the south okay so what we've done there is we've shown that there's magnetic effects out there where the compasses are and more interestingly we've shown the direction of that now if we did the same here with plotting compasses we'd notice that they pointed this way this way this way round and back in okay now you remember i've shown the direction they would all point and I've joined them all up and then I'll put the arrow to show the direction on that and what you're beginning to see here is the shape of the magnetic field. Do you notice it's a line in this case and it has a direction. So what I'm going to do now is draw a couple more magnets to show you the shapes of the magnetic field. So let's look at our bar magnet again. I'll draw it down here because I'm trying to get everything really on one page. And there's our bar magnet. And we'll draw on the North Pole and the South Pole. And uh, now what we imagine is that we put lots of plotting compasses uh, onto the board and we'll draw the directions they point. And you all know this diagram, they would point out of the north, round, into the south, out of the north, into the south. Just draw a few more. There we 
go. And uh, I've missed two bits from my diagram. Out of the north, off the page, back in. Okay, so you can never have broken field lines. They're just too big to draw. They go out, round, and back in again. And the other thing that I've got wrong here is field lines always have a direction from north to south. Be careful here. Yeah, north to south. North heading off towards south. So there's the magnetic field uh, pattern of a bar magnet. What do we notice about it? More field lines here than out here and the field lines spread out. The next one will be right down here. So where the field lines are close together, that's where we've got a strong magnetic field. I think I mentioned sort of putting my hand in the way and uh, magnetism can pass through your hand and the strength of the magnetic field can be described in terms of how many field lines pass through my hand a certain area. We don't really need that for GCSE. But you can see strong magnetic field, weak, getting weaker out here. And also, where the magnetic field is strongest, by definition, are the poles of the magnet. Now, you might remember I said, what happens if you take this fella and bend it around into a horseshoe shape? Well, if you do that, you end up with a magnet that may well be this sort of shape. I hope I've drawn that big enough for you to see. Okay. And you've got two pole pieces here. So we'll make this one the north and uh, this side the south. And I showed you earlier with the plotting compasses that the plotting compass would point straight across. So the field lines in the gap of the pole pieces will be straight across, straight across, straight across. Fringes outward slightly at the edges. Okay. Um, so it would be slightly kind of round here and what have you and round there. But the important thing to note is that there are three field lines there. Three there, three there, three there. Everywhere in that gap, everywhere, is the same strength. This one is a really important one. This is a uniform, same strength everywhere, field. Now that's only true in the gap, okay? It's only true in that gap. It's not uniform out here, because what happens is the field lines sort of come out and spread out like that, and have a direction. And so when we make an electric motor, we're gonna to wanna to get in there. We wanna to get, to get into that uniform magnetic field. So finally, let's do the Earth. So if you remember with the Earth, I'll draw it as a sort of big ball like this, okay? And I'm gonna confuse things slightly by calling this the North Pole up here and the South Pole there, okay? I'm gonna put it inverted commas because that's what we call them, okay? But what we found was that when we got compasses, Compasses pointed to the north. Now this is a little bit tricky, but if I draw a plotting compass here, here, and maybe there, okay, the plotting compasses will point like this. That way here, that way there, and down here, okay? So the first thing you notice is they're going around and then down, it's not a brilliant diagram, Okay, this one, a plotting compass here would point down, then that way, then that way, then that way. Look at this. Take this diagram and turn it through 90 degrees and just put it here. Okay, so the reason that's working is that inside the Earth, you can imagine a bar magnet like this. Okay, and this is the really weird bit. Because the north of the Earth attracts the north of the compass, this part is a south magnetic pole, and this is a north magnetic pole, okay? So you can imagine the Earth as having magnetic material in it. Um, it's very complex what's going on in there, okay? But there's proof there must be magnetic material, there's proof there must be iron. We can see a magnetic field out here, which we use to navigate. And if I join up the plotting compasses, it's exactly what you'd expect, out of the north, round and into this south pole okay and on the other side exactly the same 
So these field lines are always the direction a free north pole would move. A north pole on a compass would point that way. Okay. Interestingly enough, of course, the magnetic field of the Earth goes much further out into space. But remember, it comes out of this end and into here where there is a south magnetic pole. Okay. Have a good look at that one and see why it's really interesting that compasses point that way near the equator and tip and tip and tip. And you'll notice that compass is really interesting. Okay. That one points straight down. Okay. So um, you don't really need this for GCSE. But when you get close to the north magnetic pole of the Earth, you can't use your compass in this direction. You, you actually use it in this direction and it dips downwards. Okay. It will dip down to the point on the floor uh, in the ground that is a south magnetic pole. Um, and back in the day, a long time ago, uh, people who explored these regions knew that, and they knew that they had to take their compass that they use in England and turn it through 90 degrees when they were getting near the poles. And when it pointed straight down, they knew they were in the right place. Okay, They used something called a dip circle, uh, which we kind of don't do anymore, but it's interesting. I mention that because when you ask people what would a compass do on the North Pole of the Earth, okay, I get amazing answers, like it would spin round in circles and stuff. You know, where's the energy coming from? Okay, it will always just point to the pole itself. So um, that's a very simple diagram uh, of magnets and magnetic fields, of induced magnets and how they work. Um, so I hope that will help you with your notes and with your magnetism revision. So I hope you found that video useful and you learned a little bit about magnets and magnetic fields. Um, you now should look at the video again. So go back and have a look through it and be really clear that you understand everything about magnets and how they work. And then you're ready to start the next bit of the topic, which is looking at electromagnets, which are the things that make the motor work in this little Brio train. Look forward to seeing you again next time.